I've looked at quite a few NAS devices on this channel from Synology to QNAP to Asistor to TrueNAS to Unraid, but today we are looking at something brand new to me, and that is a TerraMaster. This is the TerraMaster F2 423, and it is a $380 two bay NAS device that they did send over for me to review, but that does not have any impact on my opinion of this device, so everything you hear will be genuine. So this video is essentially gonna be broken down into two parts. The first part being going over the initial thoughts on the device and initial setup. Then I'll use it for about a week or so and come back with my more long-term review. So let's get that started. Here's the device, as you can see, it is relatively compact and is designed to sit on your desktop. And based on the looks, I don't think I would mind that. Obviously on the front, you can see that there are two drive bays and around the back, we have access to our IO, which is cool that we get two 2.5 gig LAN ports, as well as two USB 3.0 ports, an HDMI out and the power in, which is a barrel connector. So no traditional three prong, prong? Three prong connector, but that's okay. But yeah, not much to it. It's got a nice brushed aluminum housing. Some of it is plastic like on the back, but looks nice. So let's talk about specs on this thing. So like I said, it's $380. I'm just gonna pull up the page right here to read it off to you guys, really professional, I know. So it has an Intel Celeron N5095, which is a quad core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can boost up to 2.9. It comes with a single four gigabyte stick of DDR4, but you can upgrade it to a max of 32 gigabytes with two 16 gigabyte sticks. In terms of max storage, they are listing 40 terabytes as the max. So quick math, uh, 40 divided by two means two separate 20 terabyte drives. We don't have that today. We have two six terabyte drives. Honestly, it doesn't really matter for the purpose of testing this unit out. So. That's, that's what we're using. So spec wise, it seems fine for the price, honestly, but a lot of people really don't care about that. When they're buying a device like this, they care about what it's like to actually use it. So let's use it. All right, the first step is obviously to get these hard drives installed. So I'm assuming I can just unclip these and pull them out. Yep. So it does look like it is toolless. It has these like rubber grommets on the side where I guess screws would normally go. So. Hopefully we can just slide these drives in there and then pop them in. Certainly this is how it's supposed to be done. Oh, these come off. Pop these two off, slide the drive in, nap in. Yep, I honestly like that mounting mechanism. We're in. All right, um, I guess we're going to plug it in and boot it up and see what this uh, setup process is like. Um, hello, are you gonna do anything? Okay, be right back. Apparently I have to install their app or maybe I can just find the IP address of it and go to it using a web GUI. I, I don't know, be right back. Okay, um, I may have a defective unit because we are not seeing any network connections. The LAN light on the front is completely off. Everything else is green like it should be. Uh, the port on the back has no lights. So it's indicating that it's not even receiving a signal. I've tried two separate uh, cables from two separate switches and same result seems to be stuck on the BIOS splash screen. If you're seeing this video, then there probably was some resolution. Okay, it's been a few days and after a couple of emails back and forth with the folks at TerraMaster, it has been determined that, yeah, I am a smooth monkey banana brained individual. And the entire issue was because I was trying to use SAS drives instead of SATA. So yeah, after talking to them and attempting to send a picture showing that, yes, I am in fact using compatible hard drives. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big dumb. They even say they're on the drive that they are SAS as f So after installing some SATA drives, I went through the installation process. It was pretty straightforward. I gave my device a name. I select a RAID configuration, and there are a few you can choose from. The one that's new to me is their T-RAID. I assume it stands for TerraMaster RAID. It's their own proprietary version of storage. From the information page, it seems like it's very similar to the way Unraid does their storage configuration. So it's very flexible if you have multiple drives. I only have two bays, so that wasn't really useful for me. There are only really two scenarios, RAID 0 and RAID 1. I went with a mirrored configuration with RAID 1 and 
set that up. It took like probably a total of five minutes and we are here in the home screen. I've done nothing else except get it into the home screen directory location page UI. Let's dive in. From the looks of it, it looks pretty similar to other NAS UIs. So it looks like we do get quite a few uh, default apps on here, some of which I probably won't use. Technical support, remote assistance, that's pretty cool if it works. But yeah, uh, I, I really don't care about all this. File manager, okay, let's dive in. Tips, uh, thanks. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure I can go in here and create folders. That's pretty standard, just a regular directory browser. So this is the app store. Looks like there are some useful apps right off the bat. I see uh, Cloud Sync, Snapshots, which I assume takes your snapshots. Every NAS has to have snapshots. TerraSync Server, TerraPhotos, TerraSync Client, a lot of proprietary in-house apps. Plex, Node.js, I'm not gonna list all these. There's a lot. Shared folders, obviously you're going to want to share folders on here because it's a NAS. So I assume you go in here under share folders, we can create a new one. Call it Terra Share. And uh, neat. We're in, there's our recycling bin. Should be able to create a new folder. Hello. If we go back in here, so let's close this, go back into file manager, test share. Hello. So there you can see that we can interact with it both using Samba in Windows or on Mac or Linux or whatever. And we can interact with it through the file manager in the UI. So even if we create another one here, hello too, we should see that reflected over here, which we do. Pretty neat. Overall, I mean, it works after I was a big dum-dum and used the correct hard drives. The UI looks pretty good. It looks very similar to all the other off-the-shelf NAS devices. Yeah, like I said, I'll use it for a week and come back to you guys and we'll do a deep dive into this and see if it's really worth getting. Well, here we are a few weeks later, few weeks wiser and I have some thoughts. Unfortunately, after getting some quality time with this device, I'm a bit let down. As a simple NAS that can be used as a network share for storing your files, it's fine. But Brett, that's what a NAS does. What's the problem? I think the problem lies in the expectations. These off-the-shelf NAS devices have gotten so advanced in the past couple of years to where you can essentially run an entire home lab from them from file sharing, to media servers, to virtualization, to Docker, to networking, and more. And that's where I think the TerraMaster falls short. So let's talk about it. Like I said, as a bare bones NAS, it works fine. I was able to set up an SMB share as well as an iSCSI share and transfer over stuff from my network at the expected speeds. So if that's what you're looking for, then cool. It's an affordable device that will keep your data safer with a RAID 1 configuration. However, when diving into the App Store, I was greeted with plenty of apps that I expected to see from a NAS unit like this in 2023. Well, this is where things started to go south. The first thing I wanted to try was the TerraSync app, which runs on your NAS and allows you to sync files from another device running the TerraSync client app in real time. This is an extremely useful feature that I've used on other off-the-shelf NAS devices. So to test this out, I went to download the TerraSync client app on my Windows machine. Hmm, the client page doesn't have the download link. Maybe I'm just being silly and it's hidden somewhere. Or uh, maybe it doesn't even exist. Yeah, there's no client app available for any platform at the time of making this video. Like, why advertise this and put it in your app store? That was a pretty big letdown as I feel, aside from just spinning up a network share, that's one of the most important features to me. Sure, there's other options like running sync thing, but not everyone wants to or even knows how to do that. All right, moving on to backups, another important aspect of keeping your data safe. Now, when I say backups, I mean backing up what's already on the NAS. Within the backups app, there are quite a few options to choose from. You got rsync, two snapshot apps, TerraSync server, <laughs> cloud backup, and some others. Now, personally, I like to use rsync since it's relatively easy to set up and works well between different softwares, is what I thought. I went to set up an rsync backup to my main TrueNAS server and I could not get it working. I've done this before on other systems with no issues, but no matter what settings I used, it would not connect. I was beginning to get frustrated as this is another one of those things that 
a device like this in 2023 should just be able to do with no issues. One thing I'll note though, if you're watching this from the TerraMaster team, please add some type of descriptions to the settings. Not everyone knows what they should be modifying and what the value should even be. A few times I was having issues in some apps and when I went to the help section on the website, the documentation was basically like, yeah, just enter the info and boom, you're done. I'd like to see a bit more description and maybe some common troubleshooting steps. So rsync wasn't playing nice for me, so I guess we aren't backing things up. Yeah, there's cloud with a few popular providers, but I don't use those, so I can't speak on that. Oh, and there is USB if you wanna plug in a USB drive and back up to that. I can see that being helpful, but again, not the option I'd choose personally. Moving on, let's talk about media. Like I mentioned, NAS devices today do so much more than just store your files and get you in trouble with your wife when she sees how much you've spent on hard drives. These devices are very commonly used as media servers to stream videos as well as store photos. But look, we have a multimedia app and a photos app. At this point, I'm just hoping they work. With the photos app, I was actually pleased with the experience. Opening it up, it immediately stuck out to me that it looked very similar to another popular NAS device's proprietary photos app, but I don't mind that. I uploaded some photos through the UI and everything was pulled in fine. You could see these files in the file browser app under the photos directory that was created when the app was installed. I was able to view the photos, download them, and organize them into albums. I was also able to filter the photos based on their metadata. And at the end of the day, this is going to be perfectly fine for about 99% of people looking for a photo management software. And the good news certainly does not continue with the multimedia app. Opening the multimedia app, I'm greeted with quite a few settings that seem to be pretty useful, like transcoding and metadata options. I made some adjustments to what I feel would best suit my needs. I then go on to move some movies that I acquired 100% legally to the NAS and realize there's no dedicated multimedia directory like the Photos app had. So I moved the movies into a directory on my user folder and I was hoping the media indexer was smart enough to find them, but apparently not. Clearly I'm missing something here, so let's take a look at the help page. Wait, what? what is this? This doesn't look anything like the current app. They show an option for adding directories that just doesn't exist. What is going on? At this point, I'm wondering if I'm being trolled here. Why is it so difficult to do anything in the software? Continuing on to the home server portion where I try to set up some virtualization through the VirtualBox app. I mean, it worked. I could create a VM and stuff, but when I'm trying to install a basic Ubuntu desktop VM, it just errored out. This could be on me or whatever, but at this point, I'm honestly too frustrated to troubleshoot, so I just moved on to the Docker Manager. I think this is the best choice anyway, considering the amount of horsepower and RAM this thing has. You probably aren't gonna be spinning up a bunch of VMs anyway. Now surely the Docker app is fine, right? I mean, yeah, it's fine, I guess. It's not the most intuitive thing in the world. You have to search the registry section to download an image that you'll then use to create a container. It would be much easier if you could just create a container from the container section and just paste a URL to the Docker image there like most other softwares. Or even have an easy way to access the console so you could just run your own Docker commands. Now you'd assume since you create the containers from this almost app store-like interface that it would be straightforward, right? And all it really does is give you the image. It's up to you to handle all the default configurations, which is fine for me since I've used Docker quite a bit and knew the correct setup for the binding mounts and volumes, but the average person isn't gonna know how to do any of this. Why not just pick some extremely popular apps and have some basic Docker template that we'll use to guide the user to get it set up? That would make this a much nicer experience, but I mean, it works, so I don't wanna give it too much shit, but I can see plenty of room for improvement. Last few things I wanted to cover fall into the networking category. Let's start with the one that works. There is a default VPN server app that will allow you to use this device as a VPN server so that you can access this device as well as other devices on your network from anywhere outside of your home. It's a pretty straightforward process. You'll just select which type of VPN you'll want to set up, change a few settings if you want, enable it, and you're good to go. If you're using OpenVPN like me, then you'll have the option to download the config file 
that you'll just import into your client to connect back to your TerraMaster hosted VPN server. The only thing you'll need to make sure is that the port your VPN server uses is forwarded from your firewall to your TerraMaster device. Neat. The other thing I wanted to test was TerraMaster's DDNS, which would give you a one-click solution to be able to remote back into your NAS from anywhere. After enabling it, I tried navigating to the URL I was giving, and shockingly, it did not work. I assume there is a port I need to forward or something, but it doesn't tell you any of that in the app, and of course, the documentation on the website was of no help either. Okay, at this point, I'm kind of just over this device, so... Let's wrap up. Overall, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty disappointed in this device. The hardware seems fine enough for the price, but the TNAS software is just so bad. I only covered a handful of apps, most of which I would consider to be important apps when you're selling a NAS, like rsync, media server, docker, file syncing, and remote access. And those just fell short for a variety of reasons. I think if TerraMaster wants to succeed in this space, they need to focus on getting the most used and most important apps working properly and focus on updating their documentation to something at least 52 times more useful. One saving grace here is that I've heard of people installing TrueNAS onto these devices, which would allow you to use the decent hardware with a quality software. Now you have to make sure that you get a device with more than four gigabytes of RAM or upgrade the RAM yourself if you do this since ZFS is a bit of a resource hog. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see me try that out with this device. So do I recommend this device? Not really, unless you find one on sale and just want something to send files from your personal machines to a NAS, then I'd probably look elsewhere. I hate to give reviews like this because I don't think they're intentionally trying to make a bad product. It's just a tough market to keep up in and I think they pushed out a lot of stuff that wasn't done or properly vetted through QA. Either way, that's my take on this device. If you liked it, then drop a like. If you want to see more NAS shenanigans, then be sure to subscribe because I do have some cool stuff coming up. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my client syncing device that actually exists and fills the missing hole in my heart actual bros but that's it thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one